s'est dans le monde entier la révolution soudanaise et que nous allons entendre maintenant. Aux côtés des jeunes qui continuent de porter des idées al certains sont parmi nous aujourd'hui. Il y a tous ceux qui ont donné leur الدارفوريين ومن القردفانيين ومن السودانيين من كل المناطق والمحافظات السودانية الذي كانوا ضحايا النزاعات التي مزقت بلدكم ولهؤلاء الضحايا ولكل الأبطال الذين بذلوا حياتهم يتمتع السودان بالحرية والعدالة أود أن أشيد بذكرى كل هؤلاء الضحايا باسم فرنسا وباسم كل الدول الشريكة المجتمعة معنا اليوم وهي إلى جانب الشعب السوداني و فكرة خاصة بعد ظهر اليوم للشاب هزاع عز الدين الذي قضى في أحداث سبتمبر أيلو 2013 وود أن نحيي بكل احترام والدته أم هزاع التي أصبحت رمز شجاعة النساء السودانية إن ثورة ديسمبر ديسمبر On the contrary, it has got its uh, its uh, principles and all of the, the conflicts that your people started for the sake of the dignity and the stability in the whole world. Also, we have other conflicts and revolutions that got the same name of the uh, great patriotism and same revolutions that got to those kind of slogans and uh, the literature compositions that you have made it clear to the whole world that it is possible that we can win the world due by the, um, the role of art, be starting with the October victory that's been expressed by Mohammed Nakid Ibrahim who uh, have composed these lyrics by the name of your October the whole harvest have got its uh, hopes and prosperous harvests and also the song by Mohammed Sikuri who also who's also been sang by a worthy the morning has just come with no prison and prisoners and we have got this great for covering your treacheries and then in 1985 revolution was the poem of Mahgoub Sharif sang by al Wardi. Oh, people that's been that been torn by your revolution Today, you have chosen to collect all of your powers, civilian and military, to make your revolution an actual success so with the support of the African Union. That I would like to pay tribute to the great and pivotal and firm role that's being played by it. And this also is a very distinguished, distinguished symbol of the transition phase of the Sudanese and also demonstrates the combating of the challenges and also one of the uh, means of disability that wants to be able to establish, establish in Sudan has been proven for the strength and despite all of the challenges we still have been able to get these uh, uh, um, accomplishments and achievements since the collapse of the previous regime and unprecedentedly we would like to stand shoulder and shoulder to make it an actual success. The transitional phase is not just a regime that comes after the previous, but again, it's an actual made for the, uh, the uh, hopes of the youth to collect all of the efforts for building their future. 
freedom, stability, and justice. Freedom to women just like men. Peace for everyone on the land. Exceeding all of uh, the bias and all of uh, the um, isolations, exceeding all of uh, the racial and the cultural reasons uh, for the both genders. For therefore, just like uh, Nile Basin country, just like in Nuba or the Eastern Mediterranean. This is exactly the approach you selected, and your revolution is very distinguished with the, the unprecedented role played by your great women who have been expressed by Mohammed Awardi that Sudan is there due to the great role played by the great women. Again, this revolution is very exceptional because for the first time in the region, it has been able to collapse this regime that was using the women to just hide their bad deeds. The Sudanese have demonstrated that if Muslims are not the, the shield of freedom and justice is still stronger and no one can be exploited afterwards. This is the approach you selected the peace of the Patriots of brave soldiers that being signed on October by whether the previous enemies that have become now partners contributing with and participating in this transitional phase with lots of hopes. Now, no, not talking about the partners of Sudan to tell you what to do, but again, I want uh, on behalf of all of those collaborating with us today in Paris that we support comprehensively all of those who would like to take the burden on their shoulders to prove the success of the Sudanese transitional phase. This transitional phase should make it well by its end to organize free elections, transparent elections that can lead to have the civilian government with full legislation. I understand your excellency, the prime minister, the head of state, that you work very bravely on the approach with no hesitation. And I know that this is the approach that you look forward with your Sudanese youth to reach and for the sake of continuing on this horizon it's very important to make sure that all of the partners adapt all of the peace charter and all of the this should also join this initiative all of those movements that still have convoys they should be returned back just rapidly as much as possible for the sake of the security of this region which is your security and also to our security on the western and the eastern borders of the Mediterranean and moreover we should continue in the economic reformers to continue in guiding the lines for this transitional phase for mitigating the deaths of Sudan which is also the first milestone of those reforms and we should also say that Sudan should get back to its international the international community with such a dignified uh, role but this in a transitional phase is very firm and it also puts firmly all of the commitments of the international community to stand together with yourself because you've been so brave to stand bravely and firmly to win this freedom and to execute those reforms. Subsequently, all of the Sudanese, on top of which the use of both genders that we have here today, representing your future and also some part of our future, could also lead us to make sure that freedom, justice and peace wouldn't be just word of literal words, but it will be an actual tangible fact on the land. France is very proud to be the back end of Sudan, to help Sudan to get into the family of the UN and to be here today in the shoulder months. Interface this place where we have the milestones of the Sudanese transitional milestones and today we have the eyes of the whole world. Thank you.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Your Excellency, Mr. Emmanuel Macron, Your Excellencies, the Prime Ministers, the Ambassadors, the Head of States, the distinguished uh, attendees uh, with all of your great roles, uh, peace be upon all of you. At the beginning, allow me to pay tribute to France for the great organizing of this important summit and for the great support that France and the, um, the whole organizers for this since the beginning of 2018 till this moment with the emergence of the Sudanese revolution. This revolution that played the great um, symbol of the, in the humanitarian history, especially in our region and particularly speaking, where the Sudanese Sudanese people have declared great unprecedented brave in, com in combating this uh, dictatorial uh, regime that have just used the raw slogans and have um, taken the freedom of the Sudanese people. And in December 2018, for more than eight months, the launching of the revolution where the Sudanese people have been confronting all of the separation faces from the direct torture and killing Still, we've got the uh, massacre of the on the night of the 9th of July, where the incidents have been one of the the worst incidents against human rights in the history of Sudan. And despite this bloody event, which have been targeting the peaceful approach from uh, the signature from the signing of the of uh, the. Uh, the agreement between the military bodies and the civilian people, those provisions that got the slogan of the immortal revolution, freedom, justice and freedom, to start a new phase, which is targeting executing the principles of the revolution as a brief phase for the democracy that can stand for long and can live for long term in this country that's been facing for quite a long time uh, the corruption and uh, now after just two years of the transitional phase uh, the transitional this transition, the transitional phase have been able to uh, adapt some of the files on top of which by signing Juba peace agreement and by executing a number of economic reforms also Sudanese have been able to get out of uh, the isolation which comes also with the fragile stance with some other files especially those related to the protection of the civilians and the uh, proliferation of killing in the corners of Sudan, of Sudan. And again, we still have the scene which is very complicated between one stance to another, between the past and the new, between the wise and the bad days, between light and darkness, between despair and the hopes. And eventually, it's the spring of hopes, despite all of the suffer that the Sudanese people have been facing until this moment, especially with uh, the economic uh, collapse and all of this uh, economic deterioration that have been adding lots of tens of, billion, of billions of debt on the shoulders of this of the state. But again, we still have the hope that. These great hopes that we will be able to, we wish that from all of you and all of our free people throughout the world to help us throughout all of the shapes of support and financing to make sure that it could be an actual reality that can enable and empower Sudan, the Sudan states, to overcome this crisis and to be able to continue in the uh, prosperous and fruitful future. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me from here to send my great greetings to all of the people that are fighting very bravely and firmly for the democracy and peace on top of which is the Palestinian people who are usually who are usually confronting the occupation forces to till this moment to make sure that they will regain their lands and these people who have just lost more than 700 patriots who have been standing very bravely in front of those military aggressions that have been trying to uh, to take over and to threaten all of those stability and also all of those uh, UN democratic 
organization throughout the whole world wit witnessing what's happening to have a newborn democracy which has been taken off and again the least to mention that it is very fragile till this moment from all of the UN organizations and all of the democratic organizations throughout the whole world who are witnessing very directly the newborn of the democracy in the world which has been taken off ladies and gentlemen Sudan today had a real window of opportunity a historical opportunity after a great revolution to build long-standing democratic peace and long-standing state of law that can get all of its capabilities demonstrated on top of which is the Sudanese human being and the capabilities of our youth and their infinite skills. So the actual spring of hope to our state is this actual human being which is by, by their wise and efforts we can be able to achieve the impossible one more time thanks to France for this great endeavor that's been proposed that we will never forget and also thanks to all of attendees from the different countries and brotherhood countries and peace be upon all of you. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the head of uh, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron. Ladies and gentlemen, heads of state, the uh, prime ministers, and uh, your excellencies, the ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, the delegations of uh, the international organizations, the distinguished attendees with all of your preserved titles. I would like to start with it. Expressing thanks for the, fran the French government, out of which, with His Excellency, Excellency the President Emmanuel uh, Macron, for the great organizing that can help Sudan as the state, youth, and people to move forward and to work as the security beacon uh, that can confront all of the challenges that we have particularly the economics and I'd like to also express condolences to all of those who lost their lives and souls by the end the marchers of Ramadan 2021. I would like also to pay tribute to the Sudanese women who have been able to prove their stance and strong stances for the sake of peace and stability. Also I'd like to pay tribute to the Sudanese people, the patriots of our youth who have spared no hesitation to just surrender in front of these democratic and we've been able to prove this for all of those been trying to kill our democratic and our will we've been able to prove this in October 1964 and also in April 1985 and one more time in December 2018 with our peaceful revolutions until this moment as youth we are still fully capable to get one more time on the arena and to spare no efforts for the sake of freedom and justice December revolution is an actual personification for no centralization no centralization for geography or for generations we are the pillars of this revolution and we are the future of the leaders we insist on building the future of the state that we would like to have we haven't reached to what we want yet we still have the the uh, framework of this shaping of the country we still have the back the uh, the old shapes and we still have lots of lots of non-firm stances and that's how we found that sh there should be a transitional period which is again not just to move in from one regime to another but it should be transitional in all of the fields and domains for to for the government to be in actual civilization also from to move from the the cheap blood shedding into the actual human rights also to move towards the wise and the sovereignty of law and the freedom of ideologies 
also to move from the male the male um, regimes into the uh, equal gender for both genders and we still have got this incomprehensive regime we still have some other steps that we wouldn't be able to continue with if we haven't got the actual support and if we haven't got the obstacle just removed especially the inflation and the debts that have been an actual burden on the shoulders of the Sudanese citizens the Sudanese debt haven't been reflected on any of the, the shapes of its economy of the economy and we have got uh, inherited a great and huge debt that we never thought to have and on the on the same time we the youth still have the hope we look forward to have the actual means of life that will help us and wouldn't let us just migrate to other countries and will help us not to sink into the actual low degrees of the Mediterranean seas all of the services that we have from the infrastructure the health care the um, education the financial capitals all of the, the opportunities for investments and all of those we have been the decades of those revolutionary and we are also the actual creators of the future Sudan is an actual strategic partner to lots of countries throughout the whole world providing lots of the means of manufacturing and raw materials that help those countries to have the actual industrial de development so it is the time to be also strategic partners participating in the sustainable development of Sudan and also to help in the sustainable development of its products and to push the economics forward and to provide better windows opportunities to our people and yes just as combating the environment and as supporter and promoter to the climate change crisis and also the increase of the uh, proposing to the world and the lots of helps of investment we still have increase of the worries according uh, for for the saving and preserving the environment this is how we come to the sustainable development goals along with adhering to the environmental and the green industrial principles and to adhere to the criteria of the environment the environment for the quality of the soil water and air those are the assets of the whole people also for our common generations at the end of my speech special thanks for the organizations in Khartoum for the facilitation of re for getting our voices heard thanks to all of you Your Excellency, the, the President of France, Mr. Emmanuel Macron, the Prime Minister, Dr. Abdullah Hassouk, Your Excellencies, with your different, excellent, distinguished titles, your ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished attendees. At the beginning, I would like to thank the French government and the embassy in Khartoum for calling yes from both genders and exerting these great efforts for the success of this summit. Great tribute to our marchers and Mudathir Mukhtar who have just lived in the second anniversary of the revolution the same exact time and place condolences and may they rest in peace I would like to pay tribute to the youth of December peaceful revolution in the streets of revolution and our country who have been usually calling for the right and peace and freedom. I would like to pay tribute to the youth of December peaceful revolution in the streets of revolution and our country who have been usually calling for the right and peace and freedom. 
بأحرفوا النور في أحد الملاحظين نحو التحول في الشعوبين منذ سبعة كامل التضامن against the bloodshedding and the all of the uh, bad deeds from the previous regime and we got the choice of people who've been able to get what they want to get this regime collapsed and again we've got the renewal of those calls to have peace freedom and transparency, Civili civilian, uh, the decision of our people. This was our decision to get our dignified life, just like others, our counterparts, that we deserve. Sudan deserves nothing but to live with dignified life and respectful rights. And we got, in that regard, the slogan, civilian, civilian. And all of the cities of Sudan have got all of this, all of the corners with this slogan in the Sudanese in our countries. We understand that our journey, that our youth have been playing is still long to build and construct the country of peace, security and transparency and we have those those detractors that just have different shapes of negativity but again with the strong belief and the solidarity and the support of the international community we will be able to get to to fulfill the premise that we have bonded among ourselves and our martyrs and this was been this have been usually the actual stance towards all of our stances and all of those who can remember this hashtag that's been spread throughout the whole world blue for Sudan the, the blue color was the actual promoter for the revolution against the massacre of the general regime and here one more time we open the channels with the whole world for the sake of the constructions and building capacities of human people here you will get acquainted with the new human people i would like to express my sincere wishes for the success of all of the partners and let's again remember the spirit of uh, the sudanese revolution and the land of the revolution in this poem our generations stand understand that all of those you've been witnessing where the soldiers were there getting their slogans and their weapons killing us under the name of region prisoning us under the name of religion and the religion is just very innocent from their deeds religion is just saying that you should stop you should stop from confronting the civilians the religion just saying that if you have innocent people you should stop your aggressions those have been just to prison in us from our blood shed on the land we have been able not to stop silence from the torture that we have in our parts and bodies and our sons and generations just burying our bodies once our youth being a revival and I can see them from my mom stating that we have got Mona Majdi they are still alive just wearing this green linen 
One of them may be perfect. And still I'm torn apart, I'm just silent and witnessing the stabs and if I'm afraid from killing, I still have the patriots who can just have their souls on land for freeing these prisons. Oh, my mother, those prisons which is full of our patriots. We have those who betrayed us, those who have been betraying our soldiers betraying our patriots and if you are afraid to be killed you will have those patriots you can see them just defending yourself those bullets once being shot just once those bullets being shot to get our rights just like this just like these weapons that once had been spread that wouldn't stop us from braving and defending our people, our sons. The bullets wouldn't kill us. The bullets wouldn't keep us silent. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, Your Excellency, Mr. Manuel Macron, the President of France, Your Excellencies, the Head of State, Your Excellencies, the delegations of the organizations, the funds of the international organizations, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished attendees, uh, peace be with all of you. Allow me in the beginning to uh, pay tribute to His Excellency, Mr. Macron, on behalf of uh, the Sudanese people and to express the great appreciation for your great initiative, for calling us for this great summit, which is very vital to, that uh, give a great window of opportunity for Sudanese that can start it being demonstrated in the whole world to resume back the actual involvement and integration of the community, of the international community, with the message of a peace and co collaboration. For 30 years, we've been isolated, just subject to penalties. And I also would like to pay tribute to all of the head of states of the organizations, the regional international organizations for their participation in this vital conference that demonstrate their support for the transitional phase in Sudan and that they are committed to preserve the prosperous rights of the whole world peoples. Your Excellency, we feel so honored with your great support and enhance to the Sudanese transitional phase and this initiative for the conduction of this summit and to have this support uh, financing Conference for the African Economics demonstrates your pivotal role in the international community as an actual effective power called for, called for mitigating the burdens of the world countries and to support our approach politically and military and we will keep this in our minds, in people as states, in our hearts, in our minds, in people and youth that are facing a very important phase throughout this transitional phase. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sudanese revolution in December 2018 has played an actual and exceptional role in its patriotism and its role that's been played by the youth of both, gender, of both genders with no bias for the armed forces of the Sudanese is a belief in the the importance of the change of uh, the ruling regime and all of it's been represented in terms of dicta dictatorship. And we got to the martyrs and the massacre, which is symbolizing a very important step 
demonstrating the confidence of people in their military, in the military bodies, and we are so honored with this role that's being played by the Sudanese armed forces, which is also again adding another different dimension for the exceptional revolution we got in Sudan, in Sudan, and its actual successful story. This is how the Sudanese armed forces will continue the actual a protector and defender for the revolution and will continue within the components of the transitional phase just fulfilling their this uh, their constitutional role for the security of Sudan and all of the bodies and methods ladies and gentlemen the change that we got to buy the great epic revolutionary in Sudan which is an actual historical change towards democratic word and to get exposed to the external word and we are now on the right track for resuming back to the international systems for the conduction of the actual reforms that included for instance the low economics and the justice reforms the economic reforms in addition to the, uh, providing the freedom and also the internal peace and signing the peace agreements in juba with lots of other also um, opposing movements and also to move towards other partners which has been an actual harvest for the partnership between the civilian and military bodies which played the actual role in the partnership of this transitional phase which has now been expands, expanded just after the uh, addition and in joining of uh, Juba peace groups this which is concentrating on the uh, tackling the actual roots cause and those tackling that's now confronting lots of challenges because of uh, the non-availability the non of uh, the assets and the methods and the efforts to get uh, for those immigrants and refugees and the security or, uh, organizing efforts related to the resuming back of uh, the involvement and integration. We do look forward to the enhancing and supporting of uh, the international community so we could be able to build and establish security and peace in Sudan for long standing. Ladies and gentlemen, Sudan with all of the contributions is capable to be one of the leaders in the international community and I'd like here to reiterate that we are in the civilian in the civilian um, body, we've been able, we've been usually supporting all of the efforts throughout our commitment and our communication directly with the heads of the states of our country and brotherly countries, especially with the African uh, brotherly countries, and we played a great role with the executing government, which has proven the importance of joining the peace initiatives in the Middle East and supporting all of the initiatives that can get the its benefits to what happened on the Sudanese lands for the Sudanese people to have their own decision and to be an actual an actual bacon for the security and stability of the region. We would like to reiterate that the transitional phase government should be committed to all of the charters and all of the international agreements and all of it, the human rights and also support all of it, the principles of the friendship and contribution and not to get into interfering in the other countries. In addition to the effective collaboration in regionally and internationally initiatives and not to violate any of the um, neighborhood countries government um, um, agreements. I'd like also to reiterate that Sudan is a promoter to the international and regional and institutional agreements and which is a call for putting an end for our conflict especially with Ethiopia in the, the um, Renaissance Dam case which is again again is the international laws and I would like also to confirm that Sudan is very committed for its diversity of lands and to to also be committed with the principles of the international and regional collaboration especially for those threatening of the um, methods like the terrorism com uh, confronting 
methods and efforts. Your Excellency says our, partners, our partnership just after the success of the revolution is going on the right track firmly to have also execution of the slogans of the revolution and uh, to confirm that by the end of the transitional phase we'll get to, do, to our goals. And uh, the transitional phase, which is having a great impact on uh, the achievements, despite all of uh, the efforts that have been played by the transitional phase for tackling uh, the economic road cause and to, and to empower the economy to be uh, revived. But still, all of those repercussions have got their own impacts on the civil, uh, on the citizens that suffer quite a lot from getting their own standard methods of life. But again, we will be able to help to get it moved from developing country filled with that into one of those countries standing in the coup of uh, the developed countries. And all of those efforts along with the support by the international community is that we do look forward to have a part of these efforts throughout this conference will help us eventually to continue working on the same uh, uh, track which will help us to be in the African continent in the right place and I'm so confident that this will help us to get uh, the change that's been calling for throughout the slogans of the revolutions which were secure which were peace security and transparency and we will spare no efforts to make sure that those slogans will be actual adapted role models to make sure that our Sudanese people will get to what they deserve as dignified respectful life that they deserve and that they have provided lots to have and again one more time just allow me to pay tribute to his excellency the President Macron and for the France, the great hospitality and the great efforts for organizing and the success of this summit. I also would like to pay tribute to all of your excellencies, the head of states, the delegations of the international organizations and the funds for the great participation and for your great support to Sudan and peace be upon all of you. Unquestionably, it's a great honor to me to stand here with you, calling these great people that we have here from very exceptional titles and positions. And just let me firstly to express my great appreciation and thanks to His Excellency, the French President Emmanuel Macron, and to also Sudan state and people and to also French people for hosting this very historical, very important historical conference to enhance Sudan throughout two years. The, the Sudanese people have got in millions to the streets, they have been into the streets and the roads and they've been revoluting against this uh, dictatorship that were ruling them. And they have been able to get their revolution a success, which, is, which was an actual pivotal mark in the history of Sudan. And as a result, this uh, glorious revolution conducted by Sudanese in December 2018 
the dictatorship have been have been eliminated and now the Sudanese people pursue to get uh, the adoption of uh, the democracy and the sovereignty of the law and to overcome all of the political and military challenges that they face currently in such a transitional phase. And also we are here today to prove that uh, the Sudanese people are capable enough uh, to survive and to build their democracy. And unquestionably, the Sudanese people have proven that, uh, that they didn't just want to eliminate dictatorship, but on the contrary, they also wanted to, to deepen the, the reforms, the democratic reforms and the economic reforms within the, this transitional phase. We do have a, a prosperous plan that's been established by the Sudanese people and they have been able to get the um, quantum leap towards the ch achievement of this prosperity. There are some targets uh, that uh, the Sudanese people have put on at uh, their priorities, which were freedom, peace, and social justice. Unquestionably, the Sudanese people exerting great efforts in different domains to overcome corruption and to overcome the economic crisis and to conduct reforms in the human rights and justice domains as well as within the framework of the comprehensive efforts and also to improve the uh, services of uh, the civilian government and also uh, the human rights services in addition to uh, the uh, public freedom and uh, the equity of genders in addition to the fact that the Sudanese people also pursue to enhance the institutions of uh, the transitional phase just like the uh, transitional council and here today and as you all know that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hasn't left a country without just being very deeply and profoundly affecting it. Such was the case in Sudan and that's how we're trying to confront this crisis emerging from this pandemic. And we look forward to eliminate the um, the violation of the freedom and uh, the providing all of the human rights, the assets and the standard means of life and all of those elements that, uh, that we should work on to get improved and to get developed for the sake of putting an end to those conflicts that's been emerging throughout the whole corners of the state. And undoubtedly, the negotiations were always uh, the actual uh, means to put an end to those, to those uh, repercussions and to end those uh, controversies. And in October 2020, we signed the Juba Agreement and we commenced working on the principles of this agreement and we are fully aware that building peace wouldn't just uh, rely on signing an agreement but again it should and it's a must that there should be actual efforts exerted to fulfill this peace and to transfer this signed agreement from just a paper agreement to be a tangible fact on the ground and we hope and we are f we are so hopeful that we will be able to get to achievements. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the transitional government has put as its first prior a number of uh, priorities that to work forward to achieve for the reforming of the uh, amendments of the laws and the public laws in addition to the, uh, also the criminal laws 
in addition to amendment and reforming the institutions that work on the execution and implementation of laws and establishing the support of human rights that have become a part of integrated part of the uh, regime in Sudan and also the economic reforms as the transitional phase looking forward to uh, get into the economic prosperity as we inherited the actual legacy of the economy very enriched uh, with the lots of economic debts that we should confront if we would like for our country to stand, to stand one more time and to revive this. Hence, we work on reaching this and the stance that we have here, which is unprecedented, unprecedented stance, especially after the COVID pandemic. And therefore, all of those, all of those demonstrations that we have, they just hide the political, social, and economic impacts that we should work on tackling and filling those gaps. So we have to commence that our first priority to, to tackle this increased uh, economic crisis. And Sudan has already uh, put on top of its priorities uh, and again, it was just removed from the list of the countries that should be supported. But again, we call upon all of the parties and all of the uh, partners, the stakeholders, to help and to support Sudan in that regard. So Sudan to be just uh, has been removed from the list of uh, the countries um, supporting terrorism. So we call here upon all of the stakeholders and international partners to help Sudan to get out of this economic crisis and to uh, implement this transparency and to rearrange the priorities in terms of the public expenses but also the economic reform which uh, also we work on just lifting all of the uh, economic hardships from the burdens of our Sudanese citizens and we've taken a number of procedures that already been taken or already been started to um, to enforce by having the collaboration of our stakeholders and we do look forward to getting more of those achievements and that uh, achieving the the economic development which will help provide lots of job opportunities to our Sudanese people so we have to provide the lots of opportunities to our um, youth of the Sudanese, the Sudanese people and instead of just letting them get in their risky immigration to other countries in the European country in the European in the African continent throughout the Mediterranean Sea so here today throughout this summit we express and we uh, provide those, those uh, uh, we express our appreciation to holding such conference and we reiterate that with your support we will be able to free our economy from what's been uh, what's been uh, added to it from that and hardships and uh, boundaries and we are still working to also would like to ex take and exploit this chance to express our appreciation for the international institutions and particularly to France for the great support and aid they provided to us which can help us to reach to what we look forward to have Meanwhile, also to uh, Ireland and the, the UK and all of other countries for the great steps that being taken that we wouldn't be able to reach without those steps. We are so we are so appreciating all of it, the stakeholders in the region and the brotherly countries for all the shapes of aid and support, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to also pay great tribute 
to uh, the French president for his great um, solidarity. And one more time, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for His Excellency Manuel Macron, the French president, for this great support that he uh, paid to Sudan. And one more time, I would like also to express my appreciation and thanks to all of the, the heads of the state in the region and all of the um, institutional, international institutions and regional organizations. And at the end, we just have uh, inherited in Sudan the huge debt legacy in our country, which is that for 30 years we have been suffering quite tremendously we've been facing huge challenges and hardships and hence we should confront those hardships and we should work together for achieving the sustainable pace on the land and to reach what our people look forward to have from hopes and prosperity speeches that were uh, delivered during this opening session. I thank also all the civil society organizations. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Musa Faki, uh, although he is not here with us uh, from the African Union, yet uh, he has sent me a message. And now let's listen to uh, the speech of the Secretary General of the United Nations to the conference. I commend uh, the Sudanese government for attending this uh, conference. Uh, Sudan and the Sudanese people have suffered a lot, uh, so it's prime time. Uh, to uh, leverage this uh, and to put an end to this suffering uh, and to work together on enhancing uh, the Sudanese institutions. This conference is a part and parcel of the efforts exerted by the United Nations in supporting Sudan. It's the right of Sudan to uh, enjoy uh, strong in independent institutions playing their effective uh, role and to achieve the aspirations of its people. So we expect uh, the partners and the friends uh, of uh, Sudan uh, to provide assistance to it uh, so as to achieve stability in the country. Of course, there are a number of challenges facing Sudan in achieving peace and security. Uh, so we need to help Sudan to get out of its economic uh, difficulties and we need to support also the private sector so that Sudan would be qualified and eligible to receive uh, assistance from regional and international organizations. Sudan is going through historical economic transformation and I'm calling upon all institutions to contribute to supporting Sudan and helping with this transition. Thank you very much. Your Excellences, the, mem the heads of states and governments, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, brothers and colleagues from Sudan, let me at the outset express thanks to His Excellency, the French President Macron, for selecting this important conference 
and for selecting France and its capital Paris to be the headquarters for hosting this conference. There are a number of historical relations uh, between France and Africa and African uh, countries uh, and uh, Sudan, of course. Uh, so, there is uh, a strong historical close uh, relationship uh, regarding the value and the history. And this uh, conference is considered to be a very important uh, one because it is trying to discuss uh, the solution. Uh, it is uh, working on coming up with uh, these solutions to settle uh, the Sudanese debts. This is a very good uh, initiative on part of uh, the state of France. And we are looking forward to this conference supporting the transition period in Sudan. And we wish that all the partners would work together to support Sudan during this historical moment it is going through. There are a number of challenges facing the Sudanese uh, government uh, and uh, yet uh, Sudan has a lot of priorities and a lot of uh, potentials so we need uh, to focus on uh, the great volume of investments in Sudan it's more uh, than 4 million US dollars invested in uh, Sudan by different African partners uh, and uh, this is an opportunity to build upon it. There is also debts uh, that uh, is about 4.5 billion euros. Uh, so we need to support uh, the economic conditions in Sudan as it needs more support and assistance. And we need to come up with solutions uh, to support Sudan during this phase, as well as helping it in developing its infrastructure. Chad, Libya and other countries are going uh, through this uh, period to support Sudan as Sudan is a brotherly country and it is very important and we need uh, to put aside uh, all uh, the negative uh, impacts uh, Sudan has incurred uh, due to the difficulties uh, and we need to come up with logical effective solutions to give hopes uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Hamdouk, Mr. Abdurrahman Burhan are all discussing these very important issues and there is also the Prime Minister of Sudan who are giving us a lot of hope with the proposals and the suggestions they are making for helping Sudan. We need all to work on this to meet the aspirations and the needs of the Sudanese and the African peoples in general. We need to show international solidarity to come up with these solutions. And we need also to go on supporting Sudan. Our participation in this uh, conference uh, signifies our solidarity and our support. And also the participation of the United Nations proves uh, that we are all determined uh, on finding more investment opportunities uh, in Sudan as well as uh, introducing more democratic solutions uh, to all the African nations. You know, Your Excellency President Macron, that uh, there are a lot of investments uh, between France and African uh, countries that uh, reaches about uh, 5 billion euros. You know very well, ladies and gentlemen, that we are giving due concern to developing the economy and uh, uh, 
uh, to build better relations between the African countries and to also find an international uh, initiative to settle the debts of Sudan. All international organizations are participating also in this initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, conference, uh, the conference of supporting the transition period in Sudan would uh, help us come up with excellent outcomes uh, for uh, Sudan. Thanks to the participation of everyone, we will all provide a suitable environment to introduce economic reforms in Sudan. We are also going to work on encouraging the French companies to invest in Sudan and to build a better future for Sudan and establish the infrastructure in Sudan. All ladies and gentlemen are playing a very important role in Sudan and especially the young officials and the young ministers in Sudan are creating now a hopeful future for Sudan. The international community is also supporting this transition period in Sudan. And I think that the main message for this conference is that we are supporting the transformation and all transformations in Sudan and achieve also all African interests in addition to supporting stability and friendship. Thank you very much. Your Excellency President Emmanuel Macron, Your Excellences, Heads of States, Governments and Delegates, I would like to express in the name of the League of Arab States deep appreciation to the Republic of France for this initiative and for hosting this conference that gathers the partners of Sudan to accompany it in this important transitional period it goes through. I commend the clear vision on which the state of Sudan is moving with the responsibility despite all difficulties in the way that we've listened to from Mr. Abdel Fattah El Burhan and Dr. Abdullah Hamdouk. Deep thanks and appreciation to both of them. Our brothers in Sudan took a long stride in agreeing upon and implementing the transition period. And it is a path that all partners are committed to supporting in a way that is shown in the meetings of uh, the group of Friends of Sudan and the Partnership Summit that was hosted by Berlin in addition to the other regional initiatives, bilateral support and international events. We are convening here today to be uh, informed about what Sudan did up till now and to mobilize more coordinated efforts to enable Sudan to overcome the huge challenges it is facing to continue the transition period in a successful complementary manner. Let me here introduce to you a number of brief ideas about the role of the League of Arab States and its vision in this context. First, the League of Arab States remains committed to supporting and accompanying Sudan down this path based upon our main responsibility towards Sudan that is considered to be a very important member in the League of Arab States and an effective element in the Arab system as the League has witnessed the constitutional declaration made in August 2019. Secondly. Countries and the Arab financial institutions are the first to support assistance and 
Sudan. And the League has provided assistance to Sudan to deal with the humanitarian conditions in Darfur and to deal with the pandemic COVID-19 as well as deal with the implications of the floods that hit the country. The League is also committed to continuing this role according to the national priorities identified by Sudan itself, including the common mechanism between the League of Arab States and the Sudanese government that is studying now crystallizing a number of development projects with a value of 100 million US dollars. Thirdly, we are commending the packages of assistance provided by partner countries and institutions to Sudan during the past period, including the loans that were provided recently to Sudan. And we are inviting today all partners to be achieving their promises and to mobilize more support to implement the national programs for the state of Sudan and its efforts to reform its economic structure, especially through finalizing the issue of writing off the debts of Sudan according to the initiative of poor countries overburdened by debts and supporting also the family support programs and supporting other vulnerable groups and meeting the humanitarian urgent needs of Sudan and the full spread of the uh, UN envoy according to the resolution 2524 of the Security Council in the UN. Fourth, we all welcome the, the national spirit of our brothers in Sudan when they reached the Joba peace agreement. And we commend the efforts of the government to involve other armed groups that did not sign the agreement in this peace process. And I'm confident that the partners of Sudan would intensify their support to implement this and uh, to provide the financing needed for this agreement, especially to build peace and uh, to disarm the armed groups and for the return of displaced ones, as well as accelerating recovery in countries in post-conflict areas. Fifth, we are all committed to the sovereignty of Sudan and the integrity of its territories and its national unity. So the transition process of Sudan cannot be completed if something is threatening its national security or is harming its strategic uh, interests. Consequently, we emphasize our full solidarity with the state of Sudan in everything it is uh, doing regarding the just measures they are undertaking to protect its sovereignty and to protect the integrity of its territories. And we renew our support to Sudan to protect its water rights. And we are inviting to reaching a legal binding agreement between Sudan and Egypt on one hand and Ethiopia regarding the operation and the filling of the Renaissance Dam apart from the individual procedures in a way that protects the interests of the, the three countries as this would avoid the as instability. Once more, President Macron, thank you. We'd like to thank also the Republic of France for this kind invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And after this opening session, we will take a short break. And then we will start the next session in which we are going to discuss the debts. France have historical relations dating